Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be back here th this evening. Uh, my name is Jim Barnes. I'm with a program here in this area called Chain Breakers. And in, in these episodes that we've been doing here, we're, what we're doing is basically breaking down the 12 steps of recovery to any program and put, putting them in the biblical perspective. Just to review what we've done in the past, uh, we did step one, admitting we're powerless over our problem, which could be anything, and then there's a hyphen in that step that our life has become, un become unmanageable. And then step two, we came to believe in a power greater than ourselves that could restore us to sanity. And we learned that sanity is defined as the state of mind preceding whatever it is that's blocking us between us and God. And then step three, we made a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understood him. And as in the chain breakers, we define that power. We define the God as we understand him as Christ. Okay. So in the past few weeks, we've been camped out on step four. Why is that? Because so many people who are involved in secular 12-step programs, when they balk at anything, they normally go back to doing what, what they know is going to make them feel good, whether it be alcohol, drugs, anything. So my involvement with other 12-step programs in the past and currently, uh, when a person does go back out, and are fortunate to come back in, I always ask them, what step were you on before you went back out? And the majority will say, I never completed a fourth step. It's unfortunate because I guarantee you, once we review what this fourth step is, it's the most freeing step there is. Okay, because we can't do the rest of the steps without that. So, with that in mind, we reviewed uh, a few, on a Two, two episodes ago, about we all live on the basic instincts of life. Three basic God-given instincts. We live on self. Unfortunately, though, myself is what has got these instincts so out, out of proportion of social, security, and sex instinct. We all need social instincts. We all have them. We all need people around us. We all need one-on-one. -on -one. That's the social, the security. We need people. We need to be secure in our futures. We need to be secure in our present. But also, though, when I say the word sex, I do not mean the actual physical sex. That's only part of it. But I'm talking about actual intimacy with, with a, another person. So we... Uh, broke down the fourth step into a segments of our resentments, our fears, and today we're going to talk about that third part, which most Christians and most people in church do not want to talk about, and that's the sex instinct. Wow. In a church setting, talking about that. But through our 12-step programs, we've learned that this is part of life. We learned in the earlier segments that we read that selfishness and self-centeredness is the root of our problems. It says, driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, we step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate, seemingly without provocation. Well, this area of our life, we have, unfortunately, we did a self-examination in this area of our life, of that selfishness in this area of our life. So, with that in mind, please, please listen to this with an open mind, okay? And... Uh, it says here um, in our literature that we read, it says, now, now about sex. Many of us needed an overhauling there. 
But above all, we tried to be sensible on this question. It is easy to get way off the way off the track. Here we have found human opinions running a stream, absurd extremes perhaps. It says here that we are not going to be the arbiters of any person's sex conduct. I've learned in this area of our life, normal is 98.6, period. What's normal for you is not going to be normal for me, and vice versa, okay? So we're not here to discuss what's normal and what's abnormal. But we are going to discuss, in our four-step process, in this area of our life, where it says here, we reviewed our own conduct over the past years. Now listen to this. Where have we been selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and frightened? Wow. Where had we been selfish? We looked at our own conduct. Where had we been selfish, dishonest, or inconsiderate? Now listen to this next question. Whom had we hurt? Did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Where were we at fault? What should we have done better? We got this down on paper and looked at it. Oh my gosh! You mean I got down, write down everything I've done in the past? No, not at all. We are not. We do not care about not just on the bedpost. We do not care about who, what, where, and what position. The only thing we care about is who did you hurt in the process of getting this area of your life, this instinct met. And I get, I, it says it goes back here to that diagram we showed you earlier in this step, how that, of those three basic God-given instincts, all that does is produce self. Unfortunately though, people have blown those instincts totally out of proportion and we'll do anything possible to get those instincts met. Guess what that does? That produces hurts, that produces harms, that produces resentments to, toward other people. So the point is, it says here, in this way we shaped a sane and sound ideal for our future sex life. We subjected each relation to the test. Now listen to this. Was it selfish or not? We asked God to mold our ideals and help us find, help us live up to them. We remembered always that our powers were God-given and therefore good, neither to use rightly, lightly, or selfishly, nor to be despised or loath. Whatever our ideals turn out to be, we must be willing to grow toward them. You know, the fact is, like I said, what we just read here, and I want to emphasize this, we're not here to, for you to discuss what you've done in the past. That's between you and God. But we are going to discuss who did you hurt in the process? Where was this area of your life so selfish that it made you do things that you just didn't want to, didn't think you would ever do. Okay. So point is, it says here, again, whatever our ideals turn out to be, we must be willing to grow toward it. It says here that God alone can judge our sex situation. Counsel with uh, persons is often desirable. Now, why is this important? Some of us come into regular 12-step programs and some have been sexually abused. Please get counseling over that. 
And we, and I'm sorry, if you have been, I'm so sorry. But how long are you going to let that linger in your life? And how long are you going to let that control your life? Okay. Where it says here that God that God can't take it. So the point is, if you need counseling, please do it. Please get counseling in this area of your life. Because I said I know that I mean I've known hundreds of men, of people, women, and men. Yes, men are have actually been abused too. Okay. And the the point is that sick people do sick things. And yes, there are victims, and we are victims. And just remember, there's a prayer for that too also that we did uh, two weeks ago in, in our resentment about this is a sick person. How can I be helpful? God save me from being angry. Thy will be done. So if you want to get rid of that resentment toward that person who may be a family member or somebody else, just remember that prayer. God save me from being angry. This is a sick person. How can I help? So with that in mind, we got to realize that suppose we fall short of our chosen ideal and stumble. Does that mean we're going to go, up, go back out there? Some people tell us so, but it isn't. That's only half truth. It depends on us and our motives. If we're sorry for what we've done and have the honest desire to have God take the take us to better things and believe we will be forgiven and we'll have learned our lesson. If we are not if we're not sorry and our conduct continues to harm others, I will repeat the word harm others. We're uh, quite sure to drink or to drug or to do whatever it is that's going to numb you. We're not theorizing. These are the facts of our experience. To sum up about this, we earnestly pray for the right ideal for guidance in each questionable situation, for sanity and for the strength to do the right thing. This is very troublesome. We throw ourselves into working harder, into helping others. We think the need of, the, we think of their needs and work for them. This takes out the imperious urge. It quiets the imperious urge when to yield could mean heartache. So people, like I said, in this area of, our, of this four step inventory, it has to be done. To the women, if you think you're going to use this as, as, a, as a control issue, well, some do. And it's, that, that's reality. Some do. But the fact is, though, to you guys who think that you're going to prove yourself in this area, of the only area way you're going to prove yourself is this in this area of your life. You got a long way to go, bud. I'm not going. To, I'm not going to go into my details. I'm not going to give you my inventory. I've already shared it with somebody. But one thing I heard when I did this part of my inventory. This guy told me, he said, Jim Barnes, you're not oversexed. You're just under secure. And it hit me in the gut. And if you want to know more about that, call me, and I'll be more than happy to share with that, with you one-on-one -on -one about how that affected my life. But I'm not going to do it on, on the Internet or anything else. But the point is, though, and this is why it's so important, that when we do this portion of this inventory, when we do share it with somebody that is a very, a person who you trust, a person who you know that's not going to be talking you know, about, about you or anybody else. But the bottom line is, though, to remember that this is not about 
what you did, how you did it, who you did it with. It's about who did you hurt in the process of this area of your life. In, our, in God's Word, in Psalms 32, Blessed is he whose, trans, whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is, blessed is the man or the woman to whom God, who the Lord does not impute iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. One other thing, so many times uh, there's been experiences I've, when I've heard people share about this, about the guilt and the shame of what they've done in the past. How can they possibly for, how can they possibly be forgiven? You know, in Psalms 103, one of my favorite Psalms. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all who live within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives, listen to this, all our iniquities. Who heals our diseases. Who redeems us from life, from destruction. Who crowns you with, long, with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth and with good things, so that the, your youth was renewed like the eagles. The Lord excuses, ex executes righteousness, the justice of for all who are oppressed. He's made known the ways to Moses, acts of children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. S now listen to this: slow to angry slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not he will not always strive with I apologize. He will not apologize with us. He will not strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with our ascending according to our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities. Now listen to this. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great are his mercies toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has, his, has he removed our iniquities from us. Wow. So the bottom line is, if we're still hung up and still hung up on the guilt and the shame of what we did in the past in this area of our life, God forgives. Plain and simple, God forgives. He doesn't know that. All he does is talks about the, the present and what you want to do about it. But the bottom line is, people, in this area of our life, it has to be shared. In this area of our life, we can look to see how self manifested in so many different ways, but in this area of our life especially, how it harmed others and hurt others. So the point is, let's realize that how can we do our fifth step, which is, as we've written this stuff down, now we get to go to another person and to God and share it. And as a result of that, that's the fourth step. Because let's review this. We did one, or the first page we did was on resentments. And remember how we talked about resentment? How if you held about a bottle of water for uh, five minutes, you're going to feel it. But if you held it there for 24 hours, it's going to rip every muscle, nerve, and fiber of your, of your arm but it'll also rip the fiber of your soul. That's resentments. Then the fear part that we talked about 
is just that, just fear. All that is, is trying to control. But this part we talked about is still trying to hang on to the past and not letting go. But how can you live one day at a time in, in, in the present when you're still holding on to that? That's why we have step five. And we're going to review that ne uh, again next week, our, our next episode. So the point is, though, if you're having trouble with this, with step four, remember, it has to be done. A searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Morals does not mean sex. Morals means honest. Morals mean integrity. A searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So the point is that we, as we review our resentments, our fears, and our sex conduct, we can go on to step five and share this with another human being and with God and be relieved of the past, period. And we can live one day at a time. It's the most beautiful experience I've ever experienced in my life. I can testify to that. So with that in mind, the program we're talking about here today is called Chain Breakers. Chain Breakers, we meet every Sunday morning at First Baptist Church, downtown Tulsa, at 9.45 a.m. And what we do is break down the 12 steps of recovery and put them in the biblical perspective. That means, uh, like tomorrow, this being the 12th month, we're going to be talking about step 12 tomorrow, about having had a spiritual awakening as a result of the steps. We try to carry this message to others, and that's what I'm doing to here today, is trying to carry the message. But the bottom line is that we break down the 12 steps and to put it in the biblical, the biblical perspective. Also, the fact is, in St. Breakers, sure, we're meeting in a church environment, in a life group environment. But I guarantee you, though, what's shared in the room that we're in, people across the hall would never share things that we're, that we're sharing. Because the fact is, we get we get deep down, we get deep and down, and to life's real problems. No, we're not going to ask you to come in here and do your inventory. But where are we? Are they going to show you how to do a fourth step, just by the book and also the biblical perspective? Sunday mornings, 9:45, First Baptist Tulsa, room 429. If you'd like any more information about it, you can call me at 918-810-4759 or my email jpbehb at cox.net. Looking forward to the next time. Thank you.